Hi, my name is Abby Erickson, and I'm the Ending Violence Against Women and Girls Advisor for UN Women, Fiji's multi-country office based in Suva, Fiji. Greetings to all of you, and thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to present to you during this Asia-Pacific Regional Training on Gender Equality and Human Rights. Um, a big thank you to CNS and the Arrow teams, and warm greetings from myself. I'm sorry that I'm not able to be there in person with you today, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and give you an overview of the Beijing Platform for Action and talk a little bit about a newer initiative um, to accelerate commitments for gender equality and the empowerment of women and girls that was laid out in 1995 at the Beijing Platform for Action and has been further strengthened through the Sustainable Development Goal. So first, just to say that the Beijing Declaration and Platform for Action, um, which was signed off in 1995, was really a visionary agenda for the empowerment of women. It still remains today one of the most comprehensive global policy frameworks and blueprints for action on pr the promotion of gender equality and empowerment of women globally. Um, it continues to be a source of guidance and inspiration to realize gender equality and the human rights of women and girls everywhere. There's several areas of focus that came out in the Beijing Platform for Action. And as I had said earlier, it's really a comprehensive policy instrument looking at all facets of gender equality and empowerment and articulating actions to improve the gaps and deficits. For example, the persistent and increasing burdens of poverty on women, the existing inequalities and unequal access to education and training, inequalities and inadequacies in terms of health care and sexual reproductive health care for women, violence against women and girls, one of the central barriers to gender equality and the empowerment of women and girls, also looking at overall persistent discrimination and violation of the rights of the girl child. Looking at stereotyping of women and inequality in women's access and participation in all communication systems, especially the media. And for those of you who are joining as media and journalists, this is so important to recognize the vital role in media in terms of accurately portraying um, and discussing um, and representing gender equality and women's empowerment issues through media. In addition, looking at inequality between men and women and sharing of power and decision making, lack of respect for and inadequate promotion and protection of the human rights of women. So there are several different areas of focus that were laid out. And it's now about 26 years later and since the fourth world conference and really very little has changed when we look at the persistent inequalities that exist for women and girls worldwide whether it's education or health or we look at the persistent violence against women and girls that continues to impact women and girls daily we see that there are still huge challenges to achieving gender equality in the empowerment of women and girls over 190 million women who wanted to avoid pregnancy have not had access to contraception. It's estimated that based on the current progress, women will not achieve pay or leadership equity with men for at least another 135 years. 19% of girls globally are married before the age of 18. More than 640 million women aged 15 and over have experienced physical or sexual violence at the hands of an intimate partner. This is absolutely unacceptable. We must accelerate action on the Beijing Platform for Action from 1995 and more recently with the Sustainable Development Goals, which has a dedicated goal on gender equality, SDG 5. It is critical that we really step up and more so as well because of COVID-19. The effort is all the more urgent now. COVID-19 has laid bare critical gaps in equality that have left millions of women and girls, particularly those who are most marginalized and who have experienced discrimination on multiple grounds behind. COVID-19 has exacerbated the lack of progress on gender equality by deepening poverty, 
increasing rates of violence, cutting off access to critical services like school and healthcare, and increasing women and girls' burden of unpaid work. The pandemic is straining health systems. We know that. Widening the socioeconomic gaps and shifting strategic, political, and funding priorities, all of which are disproportionately and negatively affecting women and girls. So if there wasn't already reason for us to accelerate action with COVID-19, it's all the more critical. And we know that by doing more on gender equality and the empowerment of women, everybody wins. Gender equality is critical to the survival of the planet and the rebuilding of more sustainable and thriving economies, societies, and political systems. It's estimated that intimate partner violence costs economies between 1.2 to 2.1% of GDP. We know that investments in quality childcare services have the potential to increase women's employment rates up to 10 percentage points and promote decent care jobs. More women in parliaments has also been found to increase the strength of climate change policies, which lead to lower CO2 emission, emissions per capita. It's all intersectional and intertwined, and we know that when we have more gender equal societies, everyone wins. So one effort that has, that has come about more recently to accelerate the implementation of Beijing, um, the commitments in Beijing, um, and the platform for action to accelerate this decade for action, which is 2030 to 20, 2020 to 2030, the last 10 years of achieving the sustainable development goals, is the Generation Equality Action Coalitions. Um, and this, what this is, an ex, is an extraordinary platform for change. The Generation Equality Forum is really has come on board um, to help turn words into action. The Generation Equality Forum has been a landmark global initiative for driving commitments that embed gender equality as the central component of building back better from COVID-19 and fueling significant and lasting change for generations as outlined in, in Beijing. Um, the Generation Equality Forum has action coalitions that have been developed, um, really that are the world's roadmap for gender equality. These innovative multi-stakeholder partnerships, which I'll explain in just a minute, are really focused on those critical areas of gender equality where we need to achieve more concrete change for women and girls. The Action Coalition blueprints um, you know, are really a way to help us look at gender equal societies and address these intractable barriers to gender equality, from violence to economies that rely on women and girls' unpaid work, to social and political systems and norms that stifle the voices and potential of women and girls and all their diversity instead of giving them a platform. These are the areas where progress has been met with backlash, areas like gender-based violence, bodily autonomy, sexual reproductive health and rights, feminist action for climate justice, economic justice and rights, technology and innovation for gender equality, feminist movements and leadership. These are the areas that we must focus on. These are the areas where progress has been met with backlash, like the notion that women and girls have the right to make their own decisions about their bodies, or where crises like COVID-19 have threatened reversals, such as an access to services and decent work. And the blueprints also address newer and emerging issues like technology and innovation and climate justice, where we really need to have strategies that center and ensure that women and girls are at the center of innovation and climate responses, that they're not left behind struggling to catch up. So out of the Generation Equality Forum, these six thematic areas have emerged as key areas to move forward with whole bodies of work and multi-stakeholder coalitions that have come around to develop blueprints I wanted to just briefly touch on gender-based violence because that's one and that's the area where I work. And just to highlight um, that, you know, for gender-based violence, the vision in this action coalition of success by 2026 um, is really that multiple and diverse stakeholders continue to come together to realize the vision of the Beijing Declaration and Platform for Action and the targets that we have in the Sustainable Development Goals 
by making and implementing concrete new commitments to address gender-based violence against women and girls and all their diversity. The commitments must be survivor-centered and really backed by targeted and adequate financial resources and political will. We need to ensure that women's rights organizations are recognized for their expertise, that they're resourced, and they have the capacity to drive change as leaders at all levels. And that diverse voices are amplified across social and political arenas, including adolescent girls and youth. Now, why does gender-based violence matter? Why is this one of the six thematic areas? Well, because of what I had shared earlier, violence against women and girls is pervasive. One in three women will experience physical and or sexual violence by an intimate partner globally. In the region where I work, the Pacific, that's two out of three women in the region. We know that violence against women and girls is widespread and it's persistent. It's a global issue. We know that we have women and girls in all their diversity experiencing multiple forms of gender-based violence. And this negatively affects physical, mental, sexual, reproductive health. It affects women's full and active participation in the labor market, seriously impacting women in the formal and informal sectors. Gender-based violence Violence against women and girls and all of thy diversity comes at significant economic cost to societies and economies. It is a central barrier to the achievement of gender equality and the empowerment of women, and it needs our full attention, full resources to prevent and end this violence. 